Welcome back to the Cody and Gavi show. Here we are. New Year's just happened, Gavi, and uh, we had a big Christmas holiday. Boca Raton, Delray Beach, Palm Beach, Florida was crowded. All these people came down here to spend a ton of money. They all went home pale because it was 50, 60 degrees, you know, at the height of the day. But uh, we're thrilled everybody left town because now the restaurants go back to normal. The park, I was just here in this parking lot. I mean, there's no spots. And I was behind an Arab family that was chit chatting away. They could see I had my blinkers on. I was waiting to park. And they were just busy ignoring me. They probably said, you know, hey, look, there's a Jew over there. <laughs> Let's not give him the spot, you know. But here we are. We're back in our podcast studio. We took a well-deserved one week off. We were going to do Man on the Street up on Worth Avenue in Palm Beach, but it didn't work out because, again, the weather was cold. It was rainy. It was miserable. We have our podcast equipment, our mobile. We, As we said, we were going to get a Cuddy and Gavi private jet, but instead we bought this mobile podcast equipment, and we were going to do a Man on the Street and it didn't work out. So we're back. Our reels are blowing up. We're on YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, Facebook, TikTok, Apple. And we have three reels going up every day on all these venues. So we're getting about 18,000 looks a day on the reels. And we just came off of this big, uh, big um, football season for college and pro and and we have the big college playoffs coming up now. We have Michigan versus University of Washington. We got Galvi here, Kreskin, to give us the picks on where he thinks this is all going. So here's my uh, uh, happy new year to everybody. But Thank here you, Galvi. How uh, was your New Year's? The New Year's was fine. I just got to tell you one thing when you say about the uh, weather down here that, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. that it was a little tough. What was pretty funny is if you go to, uh, if you went to the resort or anything, there was one day that it was nice, and it was like 71 degrees. And what was really, uh, what was really kind of funny is the sun, you know, like sets much earlier in the wintertime than in the summer, and as the pool goes dark at like 3.30, at 3.15 you're watching everybody move their chairs back as they get a little bit more sunlight until eventually they're all like ants they're all in the corner together right. trying to get that last five minutes of sun because uh they didn't really have any sun so well can you like, can you imagine let's say a room over there is 1500 a night you got a little bunch of little munchkins and you have your wife you have three rooms it's 4500 a night and now you're there seven days, so you're there. You're spending thirty, forty thousand dollars, astronomical money, and you're going home pale. The kids are ripping wallpaper off of the wall because well, they can't do it anything. But it didn't rain. What was what's pretty funny is, as before they come down, you know, the parents always say to your kids, "Listen, you're not going to go swimming if it's you know in the fifties and sixties. It has to be like seventy-four degrees for you to go swimming." And then when they get down here and they see 59, 60, 63, they're like telling their kids, all right, go in the water. Go Is in the that water. pool heated over there? It's I've, heated. Not, I've it's never heated. been in the pool because I see so much. Kids had a good time. I well, mean, the, there's so much pee in the pool from all those <laughs> kids. I've <laughs> never gone in the pool. They had a good time. As long as there's, uh, I guess, alcohol for the adults. Yeah. I mean, they made the best they of it. They do have a bunch of bars over there. You always got to try to make lemonade out of lemons. I mean, you can't sit there and, and you know, you got to like... Uh, Try to make happy. But anyway, going on to these picks right now. So we have Michigan versus University of Washington. I think. One and two. I think that Michigan. Let me write this down. Michigan. I'm who is favored by four and a half points over Washington. I think Michigan, sort of like, uh, that was their big game, you know, uh, Michigan beat Alabama. And I think that was, that was big, an unbelievable it game. It was, and it's ver it was very emotional. And I think uh, I think Washington plus four and a half points is going to beat Michigan soundly. They're the underdog, and they're going to win soundly. They're going to beat Michigan. That's my pick on college. College. As far as pros go, because it's the last week of the year, this is like a slippery slope. You got some teams that need the game and some teams that don't. So one of those games, for instance, is the New York Jets playing New England. 
And because the Jets don't own their first-round pick because they traded it to Green Bay for Rodgers, they, they would like to win. They would like to beat New England. New England would like to get the best pick possible. There's no sense in them beating the New York Jets. So I sort of like the, I like the New York Jets plus two and a half over New England because it's, it's better for them in the long run to, uh, to actually beat New England and New England to lose. I like Detroit over Minnesota minus three. Detroit would like to be, come in second place in the conference. Minnesota is, is like done. You got New Orleans and Atlanta playing for a playoff spot to maybe host the Philadelphia Eagles. And I think New Orleans is a much better team than Atlanta, so I like New Orleans minus three over Atlanta. And the Chicago Bears, who gets the number one overall pick because of Carolina's trade, they're playing Green Bay. Green Bay needs this game for any hope of a playoff, but Chicago is actually playing the best football of the year, and they want to get like a good start for next year. So I like the Chicago Bears plus three and a half over Green Bay. All right, Ben, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You hear me, Ben? You over there, Ben? <laughs> ben, here's the picks. He's I'm got here. some big picks. We need these reels right away so that he can That's get right. these, uh, you know, so all the— all the I don't want to take credit every, after this. Everybody can, you, can bet the games. Can you do me a favor? Can you give me all of your clips in a 30-second uh, little little synopsis? Yeah. Yeah, I could do that, and I can make it really quick right now. Are we ready for this? Let's, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's One, hear it. Yeah, three. I'll go really quickly. Boom. In the NFL, I like the Detroit Lions over Minnesota by three. I like the New York Jets plus two and a half over New England. I like New Orleans over Atlanta minus three. I like the Chicago Bears plus three and a half over Green Bay. And in college, I like Washington plus four and a half over Michigan. And I like them pretty big. I think that's going to surprise There you go, number. Ben. That was really fast. That you was got perfect. It? I got okay. it. All right. That was, now that we was... can move on. So that was real. I'll, tell, I'll give you a funny story. So I was invited. This gal I used to go out with, you know, Christmas week. Um, she invites. I, I don't date her anymore. She calls me up and she says, I want to invite you to this comedian right over here in Meisner Park He's an African-American guy, and he's Jewish. I said, wow, that sounds pretty funny. You know, I'm going to go see it. I'll be happy to go see that. But then she tells me that her previous date canceled, so I was the second. You were the best. She actually I told was you the, that? Yeah, she did tell me that. I was excited that I was invited. Then I was told I was the backup. Wow. But anyway, I went. Chop liver. So, right, yeah. So, I'm, like, debating, 66 years old whether I go to the bathroom before the show or not. And I wait to the last minute. I run to the bathroom, and I'm standing there. They have two urinals in the bathroom. I'm standing behind these two guys. Everybody in Boca is considerably older than Calvi and I. So I'm standing there. It's two minutes. And the show's about to start. It's two minutes. It's three minutes. It's four minutes. I'm standing next to this other guy, and he says to me, this is Boca. Nobody can pee here yeah, in right. Boca. <laughs> you know, right. You're going to have to stand here for five or seven minutes while it drips out uh, from these people yeah. in front of you. That so is... it was like nine minutes these two guys took to pee. And of course, it's like the, stage fright, too. Yeah, right? yeah. The, the, the lights went down, and I'm walking through the thing trying to find my seat while the lights were down. But that's it's called Boca pee. Boca pee. Anyway, you're here. lucky. You're lucky you didn't see Andrew Dice Clay because if you would have come in a little late, he calls out everybody in the audience that's coming back in. If you're a little late, that you turn around and it's enough to embarrass you that you don't want to even come back in. Well, this guy's name was Sarge. He's a Jewish African American guy. Sarge. Sarge. Okay. And the first person that called out from the audience to talk, you know, to like to, you know, be part of the show, he says, "Shut the fuck up." I'm being paid for this show. Don't talk. And nobody said another word <laughs> the rest of the show. I mean, he was angry. He was right. mad. And then, and then he finished the sentence by saying, count the amount of seats here. There's 352 seats. Every ticket is over $100, and I get 100% of the door. 
That's over thirty thousand dollars for my hour and a half show. Well, I see pal. where he got the Jewishness. Yeah, in this. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Let me do wow. my show, and I'm like, whoa. So now at the end of the show, you know, he, he he has people going up for questions and answer, little routine, you know, for if you want to go talk to a guy. So I go up to him. You know, I wait my turn. There's like five people. And I go up to them and I say, hey, Sarge, you know, I have a podcast. It's called Cuddy and Gavi. We have over 250,000 listeners now since before the holiday. Would you like to come on to um, our podcast? He says to me, I'm good. I don't need it. <laughs> he said, what? He said, no, I'm good. I don't need to come on your podcast. We're going to so play this just tape put back. Me right... One year, we're going to play this tape yeah. back. And it's going to, like, you know, he's going to be embarrassed that we turned him down. I that said, we're sorry, turn are you down. serious? You could, we could make you really, really funny on yeah. this show. He didn't want to hear about him. Anyway, so Gavi here is wearing his Harvard shirt which um, obviously has been well laundered from his days in yeah, Harvard. Yeah. I mean, it's probably 40 years old. You know. And that's the big story of the week. Where, what's your take on the fact that they allowed this plagiaristic African-American woman as president of Harvard to languish for two, three, four weeks with this crap? There is so many layers to this story. I mean, there's so many layers to it. Like one, you could start off where that she didn't get fired for anti-Semitism, like of the of how she like choked during Congress. She resigned because of plagiarism, which now a lot yeah, of, she didn't apologize and she didn't apologize. So the question is, if she didn't plagiarize. 80% of everything she ever did, she would still be there. So it had nothing to do. She didn't resign because of that. But you see, Reverend Al Sharpton and everybody's coming out and saying this is a racist firing and that's, or a racist forced and that, resignation. And that's where Al Sharpton, in order to gain you know, respect from from everybody, you got to call balls and strikes. And not every single person— I like that, Gabby. Well, not every single person. You're right. You got, and you know what? There's a lot of people that are scared. You know, there's a lot of people that are um, white that don't want to say anything because they don't want to be scared to say the, the word racist. This is a, a touchy subject. Right. So they, I'll let you say all the bad stuff. No, and they, they don't want to be. They don't want to be considered you a racist. You can go out and find no tires on your car. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't say anything. But yet, yet she wasn't qualified. She she one hundred percent wasn't qualified. And Al Sharpton doesn't see that because he makes a lot of his money on these large corporations that have the diverse equity uh, and quality situations so that's where he's scared that all the big large corporations are going to now start saying you know what we got to start hiring people by the credentials that they have and and their talent level so like if you look at the if you look at just in the united states for a little bit look at some of these jobs let's start with kamala harris so she was 100% given the job as vice president of the United States because she was a black woman. She didn't, she didn't even qualify. She didn't even make it to the first debate. You had 16 people running. She didn't even make it to the first debate before she resigned. So she wasn't very well liked, but she fit the bill. Then he goes from there and he chooses Mayor Pete to be head of transportation because he was a gay man and thought he could run this. Well, if you notice, all these uh, protests that are closing down um, LaGuardia and JFK and LAX and all these airports that are making people wait by two and a half hours, where's the Secretary of Transportation saying, hey, we got to throw these people in jail? We can't have people missing flights that are three hours late because— you got 20 people blocking a highway. So that's another guy that's way, they checked over, the box. way over. He checked the box. Then you can go and you can go with Mayorkas. Here's a guy. Isn't he Jewish, though? Mayorkas? No, he must be Greek. What is Mayorkas? He probably... I don't know. I think he's from Cuba, I think, originally. Oh, he's Cuban. But, but, but the, the bottom line is, here's a guy. Like, how many times can he say, can he look you in the eye and say, the border is secure? 
I mean, I don't, I don't know if you've slept under a rock. And you got to come out and say, like, they had 320,000 people last month come into the United States, and he's telling you it's secure. You got people from Senegal and Guyana. You have people from all over the world. Every single world leader is looking at the United States right now during these crazy times saying, we could send our worst people into the United States. We could do anything we want because they actually are telling their own citizens the border's secure. He's way over his head. That's another one. So it's a check the box there. Supreme Court judge. We have a African-American woman that got appointed. But are you trying to tell me there's not one African-American woman that can actually tell you what the definition of a woman is? I mean, we have someone on the there, again, check the box. But there's plenty of people that are qualified, and our country is going to suffer if we keep not choosing the cream of the crop. Because if you think China and other countries are choosing, uh, checking the box people, you're crazy. Well, I have two... Um Two, one, two of my very good friends are African-American, and I've spoken to them about these, this woman gay at Harvard, and they're saying there's a huge conflict because they feel she was hired because it was check the box, you know, a woman and an African-American and not actually completely qualified at that level where— Against other candidates, she wouldn't have held a candle. I mean, obviously, they didn't do the research to see that her work. She never published a book. I know. Never even wrote a book. You're you're the president of Harvard. You haven't written a book. I wrote a book. I think 11 you know? articles and eight she copied. Right. So here you have, you know, the fact that she was given this job for eight, 800000 a year, plus, 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 whatever she gets— because she checked the box, but now that she's fired, she's screaming bloody murder, and Al Sharpton is screaming bloody murder because the box was checked. Right? Playing the race card, yet Playing it's okay. The race, and it's, it's okay. not fair. I, I think the race card needs to be played when it when it's wrong. You know, somebody stopped by police officers and they're yanked out of a car, and and they're not treated properly. Let's call the race card. You know, right. they should be. But in this particular situation, you have a woman that's plagiarized at Harvard, not a community college, Harvard, right? right? 40 times. And you're going to play a race card on this? Well, did you see there was the one girl who they interviewed, and her job is she sits on the board of, uh, of Harvard on the people that decide if you plagiarize or not, that students come before her. And she has to decide if they're thrown out of school, if they get a demerit on their record. Like, she she's, takes all these cases. And she said that she has to, these people are crying in front of her because it's their life. Yeah, of course. And she said that gay was far worse than any of these students that were in front of her that actually got expelled from the school. So, I mean, what message are you sending that the president of Harvard University— gets a better deal than than a student is has like they the students are at a higher standard than a president and and the other thing that you got to look at with harvard this took years just they asked uh bill bennett who was in charge of right they asked him what does he think and he said they asked him do you think harvard can come back from this and he said i do he said but they won't and he doesn't think they will because it's so in them that they need it to change, they're so woke in everything they do that the quality of people that you want to hire, if I wanted to get a, go to a doctor and he went to Harvard, I agree. He's great because medicine is separate. But if you wanted a, a lawyer who looks at the law, I don't know if, that, if they're how great and talented they are anymore. I think that they are, uh, I think they're brainwashed in a lot of their thinking. Well, I wouldn't hire them. If we're talking about winners and losers, who the losers are is the entire Harvard community. I mean, whether you're a faculty member, whether you're a board member, whether you're a parent, or alumni. whether you're an alumni or a student, 
I mean, the fact that they allowed this woman to languish for four weeks after that congressional hearing where she couldn't even, you know, they chopped heads off, they cut breasts off, they killed people. You can't even say it's— And, a, they, call, and, they, and they drew a line on plagiarism. Right. Genocide was okay. Genocide was okay. Uh, I mean, and they, they allowed, I, I think the crisis management failure at Harvard talks about the school in itself— well, I think the big thing— uh, It's terrible. I think what's going to come from this, though, because it's not done. She was the first pin to drop. And I think what you're going to see is—and it's interesting, but there, there were a lot of board members who stuck up for her. Every single board member that backed her after the congressional hearings, they need to resign. Every single one of them. Then— why did they back her? I don't even know the answer. Because I think they thought that they were so powerful that they could make this go away because they're Harvard University. But, I, I mean, was the issue of plagiarism out at the time they backed her? They squashed was it. it. There was one, but it was a story that the New York Post was doing, and they threatened to sue the New York Post if they printed it. So they they knew it was coming out. They tried to protect that. They But then the story just got so so big they couldn't they couldn't do it. I also think— that you have to let go every single professor who signed on that they agreed with her on her comments of the congressional. So there are professors out there that are teaching your kids that, that they think that the genocide is okay. It depends on the context of it. Like, that, that thinking is they have to leave. Well, not only that, it goes beyond that because they are going to give her 800. She stays on faculty, even though she's a plagiarist. She stays on faculty, even though she's not president anymore. And they're going to continue to pay her 800000 a year for as long as she wants to stay there. I mean, is that right? Do you know who the smartest president of the Ivy League schools who? is? The president of Columbia University. She was invited to go to this congressional hearing. She looked at this hearing and said, I have other plans. I have to be at a climate uh, change meeting. And she passed. Like Bill, like uh, Donald Trump's pa passing on the debates. Yeah, but, but she passed. Right. Do you think she sat back this Christmas and oh New Year's God. and yeah. said, look at those idiots? I mean, Penn's gone. MIT, well, MIT is an Ivy League, but... That person's next on the list. Harvard, done. She's sitting there saying, was I a genius? I knew not to show up at this congressional hearing. That was super smart. She avoided, you know, a train wreck. But go going on to the, okay, so we, I guess this Harvard deal, you know, she's going to resign or she resigned. The they she gets to keep her money. She's still on the faculty. And actually, you know, the guy that they put on the job is Berger. That's a Jewish name. Is he Jewish? Ben, can you look that up? The new president of Harvard, wouldn't that be something if the guy's Jewish? I think he is. That would be crazy. But he's only interim. That means that— uh, But it doesn't until, matter. Until they he's can still, find a person to replace him. You know, him. If, if Joe Biden's not president, Kamala Harris is president for a week, she's still president. No, that's true. But, I mean, but then that's another wrong reason. You don't, like, if he's not qualified, he shouldn't be there either. But, I mean, they had all these Palestinian protests, and now all of a sudden, is he Jewish? It's Alan. Is it Alan? Alan's a Jewish name. Al yeah. yeah, it's Alan Garber. Oh, Garber. Garber. I thought it was Burger. Same and thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Bergowitz. Is... <laughs> Same thing. Bergowitz. Uh, I think he. Bergen Schwartz. I think he is Jewish. He's Jewish. Yeah. All right. So now, so now, let's move on. I'm going to give you another another loser if we Wait, move on. From, okay. okay. Let's Go hit on, another. Tell new. No, you tell. I mean, who's Harvard the loser? Is... <laughs> who's the loser, Gavi? I'm going to give you another loser. The state of New Jersey right now, because they have a senator in Menendez, where other— I can't say his name. I know, Menendez, because the crazy thing about this state, and to bring our audience up to speed a little bit, the guy's so corrupt, it's unbelievable, and he has go they just found out that he took a bribe from Cutter— from the uh, that's Cutter, not Cutler. Yeah, right. <laughs> Cutter for they gave him a gold wa uh, offered him a gold watch. It looked like a Patek Philippe watch. Uh, they actually gave the retail goes for way above retail of what the number that they gave. They made like it was twenty thousand dollars. It's much more than twenty thousand dollars. But besides that, they have him with gold bars that he's taken. The guy is with fingerprints with everything, but he won't step down. 
Now, and the, he still has his um, chairmanship. No, yeah, now of the Fed Foreign Relations Committee. Well, he stepped down from that. Oh, did he? But you have Fetterman. You have Fetterman who wants him to step down, and he can't understand why he's allowed to stay there, and that the other guy Santos from the that was on the House, they made him step down without any charges yet. So. The reason why Menendez is there, if he steps down, then they lose the control of the Senate. So he's there to block Republicans. The second thing that they're worried about is the person that wants to take his spot that's running is Governor Murphy's wife. Now, you got to follow this. Governor Murphy of New, of New Jersey. Jersey. Okay. His wife is, going to, is running for Senate, and they think that she's going to win. Now, if Menendez steps down— Can he run for Senate? Who's that? Menendez? Is he yeah, allowed to— Well, yeah, he's under yeah. indictment. He, he can, can still run. run until the charges. Okay. But she's going to She's Going, going to, to oppose him. She's going to oppose him, and, and there's a third candidate that's going to come who's a Republican. And if Menendez and Murphy split the vote, the Republican can become a senator in New Jersey— so they don't want that. Then Murphy, if Menendez steps down, Governor Murphy can appoint his wife as a senator. But then that looks a little suspicious, don't you think? Like a governor? But they'll do it anyway. Who Look. ever heard of a governor they'll picking their wife? Why not? Them run. And then it's hard to beat because then Menendez, you don't get a fair shot if you're right. already an incumbent. So that's a little crooked. You know, you're choosing your well, wife. It doesn't matter. They'll do it. Why aren't they going to do it? That because way I think that could turn. Senate. I think that could turn off. So here you got the state of New Jersey. They're uh, they don't know which criminal to like put in charge of everybody. Booker's silent as can be because he doesn't know. Yeah, what where is he? He's silent. Yeah, he's silent all over the place. Right. I mean, he can't say anything about gay because that's you know right. that goes against his whole thing. Uh, so anyway, is he a candidate for? Um Anything beyond, uh, you know, Booker? yeah, the, is he trying to, if Joe Biden doesn't make it, is he, is he going to run? Is he, do you think that maybe he could become uh, the majority leader? Oh, you know, with, uh, right. you know, the, the, he can maybe do that. So that's like one thing. That's another loser of, uh, of like uh, New Jersey. And, it's, you know, it's just unbelievable. And then we have Epstein. We have Epstein. And I that list is coming out, 177 names, and I will make an announcement right now. Gavi and Cuddy are not on that list. <laughs> but, but did you We are not on that list, folks. But did you see the funny story <laughs> that's going on with uh, Jimmy Kimmel? No. Okay, so first of all, there's an ESPN uh, guy that's, uh, that was a football player. His name's Pat, Pat McAfee. If anybody that doesn't know Pat McAfee is, he is a badass guy that is great. He's one of my favorite guys. First of all, the guy's Harvard, uh, went to Harvard as a punter. He came into the NFL. The guy's like 6'3". He hits like a linebacker. Now, if you ever watched him when he played for the Indianapolis Colts as a punter, he was one of the first guys down there to tackle you. This guy was a headhunter. And not only was he a headhunter, he was also the best punter in football for years. Now he comes back, and he is just, I think, the best. He, he has the best, He's pushing people aside, and he gets Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, to always come on his show. And Aaron Rodgers kind of said that Jimmy Kimmel is going to come out on the list. Really? But— He's not. Jimmy Kimmel saying he's not. But Aaron Rodgers is just keeps saying it because, you know, you're allowed right. to say it. And Jimmy Kimmel lost his mind the other day, called him an MF this. You hurt my kids. You're doing like he lost it. Like and Aaron Rodgers and this McAfee are just laughing. But the funny thing is ESPN is owned by Disney, which also owns ABC where Kimmel is. So now they're having internal fighting going on. So is this list of. 177 names. Is it people that were pedophile island, ped however you say it, or was it people that were just on his plane? It's it's everything to do with Epstein, but sometimes you right. could be on the list if you're mentioned. Like Bill Clinton's on the list 50 times. Because That's a he, lot. 
but he was mentioned. It could be that right. he turned down, someone t took the fifth, they asked him to to come in, he could say Bill Clinton took the fifth, that's one time. So there's a lot of stuff like that. Um, one thing that was interesting that I told you the other day is I have a friend of mine who uh, lives in uh, down here and in New York, and he took a, a girl that he started dating, and she wanted to see where Epstein lived. So he goes, and he's not sure exactly which house. So he asked the mailman, to say, uh, which one's Epstein's house? And the mailman takes him and points out the house. And then he says to the mailman, is there any stories you know that nobody else would maybe know? And the mail guy says, there is. I mean, I could get into my Joe Biden voice and listen. Right. But, uh, and he says, there is. And um, he said, do you know who? This is in New York. New York. Right. Do you know who Epstein's next door neighbor is in New York. And the guy goes, no. And he said, Bill Cosby. That's a racist comment. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill Cosby. I mean, think about this. You have a pedophile next to a guy that gives quaaludes That's out a racist and, comment, and a rapist. You? <laughs> you, got, you got a pedophile and a rapist uh, side by side. Could you imagine shit. the parties that those two had? Like, they could have been like sitting oh, yeah. there. I mean, that's... But Bill Cosby wasn't accused of Underage, rape. but he wasn't accused of underage rape. It was just <laughs> just, just quail, just, quail just, rape. Just whacking quail the people out, yeah. taking advantage of them, raping them. That you know what it's like. It's like you're playing poker. Epstein is the ace of spades, and he came in with uh, cowboys. Right. I mean, so that's... I have this question: You're on the list. You're CEO of some giant Aetna insurance company. You're on the list. You're on the plane. You've been the pedophile island. Are you losing your job as CEO and your $40 million a year paycheck if you're on that plane? Does your board talk, does your board call you in and say it's Curtin's Joe, it's Curtin's Bob? Well, you were definitely not happy this New Year's when everybody else was right. celebrating. You were, like, thanking, hopefully— 2024 will be a good year for you, and you're a little nervous. My guess is if you are uh, on the board, if your name's mentioned that you were on that plane, you will no longer be on that board by by the second quarter of this fiscal year. Right. You're going to lose your job. They're going to ask you to step down. Or are they going to or are they going to make you do a deposition? Are they going to call you in, let you defend yourself? Why were you on the plane? What were you doing? It's not, it's not worth— if they can let you, if they can say that, that, if they can't prove that anything was wrong, that you can go to jail, and all you need to do is step down from your board because, uh, you know, it's save your family, save everything, just go away quietly. And, you know. So you're a board member and you find out, you know, somebody did this, you're tossing them off the board. You're saying, Psh, out I think of here, he, Bobby. I, th I don't even think you have to toss them off. I think that there's a, a conversation right now amongst all board members. Oh, you think it's And I think everybody said, strength. by the way, I'm just going on the record. Anybody whose name that comes up here, I'm just going to let you know now, you're going to resign. And everybody's like, okay, hoping that it's not... Like, it's disgust already. But you you have so many obstinate people, like Menendez, however you say his name, Joe Biden, even though the Democrats, 79 percent of them, don't want him to run. You have this woman gay who stuck it out for four weeks, the woman from University of Pennsylvania. There's a lot of stubborn people out there. There's a lot of people that may say, I'm not stepping down. This is a lifetime, you know, gig, president or CEO of this giant company. I'm not stepping down. I didn't do anything wrong. Well, you know what? It's a little different. Yeah, you're messing if, around if, with if, underage it, listen, kids. It's a little different than if you're accused of of a of a crime, a sex crime, of um, of a sexual assault that no one knows. Than to be on this plane. And what I mean by a sexual assault is like. It's different than if Paula Abdul, 24 years later, is blaming the producer of American What Idol. do you think of that? I think she is off the wall. That the, It was eight years between the two different times. Meanwhile, he hired her to be the judge on uh, You Think You Could Dance. She, he, she says he groped her in an elevator. She made millions of dollars. Why is she doing that? I think she's. I think she's like probably career, desperate. Yeah. I, I've seen her when I remember watching her on American Idol. And some nights, 
she looked like she was out of it as a judge. Like, she looked like she was on medication. And uh, I think he gave her... Uh, I think they gave her a gift to be a judge on that show when it first started off. And uh, for some reason, to come back now, this was a hand but that fed you. Would, would you blame? And I'm, so it's uh, a little different than if you're on this plane. This plane was targeted for one island. No one goes, by the way, no one says where are we going. They, you know where you're yeah, going. Yeah, you know. and, and And by the way, you know a little bit about this guy. Because if I said to you— Well, you'd already been convicted If I said to before. you, by the way, I got to know how—how how do I know— how do I know you have an island? If you would say to me, Gavi, come to my island, I would want to check out, man, how does this guy own an island? Like, who? Like, I got to do some background to you. How do I know you're not going to kill me on this island? Like, like you really own an island? So when the list, so when the list comes out, like Bill Gates is obviously on the list. He got divorced. It cost him $30 billion. <laughs> but, I mean, does it tarnish the reputation even more so than it already is? I mean, these guys that are already paying a price. Bill Gates paid a price, $30 billion. bucks Because his name came out before the list. Yeah. I mean, he paid the price because, you know, uh, that was Melinda. Like, it was, like, enough. But— it goes to show you the power of the people that are on this list that did everything. First of all, they he killed— They blackmailed them. Well, first of all, they killed Epstein. <laughs> yeah, they killed let's, him. Let's just go— Let's, let's just, go through that. The secure, in, the, in the toughest prison in America— Right. He, most secured prison. Most not secure. Toughest, most but. secure. It was a Marion right. They had the high-profile uh, Jeffrey Epstein there to watch. They got two guards that decided that they weren't going to even watch him at all. The cameras weren't working on to this thing. No one knew. They then threw an inmate in there that's a cool killer. I mean, they, they, it was like, and then they came back and said, And oh. he had 17 bed sheets. Uh, yeah, 17 bed sheets. And he had the names of every single politician, judge, lawyer, royalty that came to his island that he could put away. And then they want you to think they didn't. They want you to think that he died by suicide, just like our border is secure. I mean, it's just, just like the cocaine got to the White it's House. A, by it's somebody. amazing that power they have. I mean, like Obama's chef. You know, the two Secret Service boats didn't work that day. The two Secret Service boats right. didn't work. I, I mean, you know, the power, it's scary. It's like that. The guy could stand in the water that it was. I mean, it was like the whole the whole thing is just bizarre, the power that is going on. And now they can't stop this. And um, it's going to be interesting to see the people have to defend themselves. So that is... Uh, that is something. But I just thought it was something that Bill Cosby says next yeah, door Yeah, that's neighbor. crazy. Uh, I can't believe the man. by the way, he is going to be back in the thing. You know, he's out right now, but they're still trying to put him away in right, his He's 80s. pretty old. He may not make it too much, you know, to another trial. But it's amazing. I thought there was a, a code of ethics. Mailmen, like bartenders, aren't supposed to talk. You know, they're not supposed to say, hey, you know, that guy's getting a lot of IRS notices or that guy's getting a lot of Social Security checks that don't have his name on it. Yeah, I got and I have another loser for it. The state of California. State of California. I they're mean, can big you imagine, losers. I mean, you talk about being upside down. Could you imagine giving free health care to immigrants, illegal immigrants, it's illegal, Im uh, illegal uh, immigrants, free health care in California. Start of January 1st. And they're going to. So now everybody, everybody that's rich is leaving California. You know, there's a lot of them down here in Florida because we're a tax free state. We don't pay state taxes. But now they're going to raise the taxes for the rich people even higher in California. And more are going to flee. Right. So, so now so now you have the the president of the United States truly believes that he could stop the flow of illegal immigrants by by having California and his uh, puppet Newsom give this free health care. Now, the first thing these free health care get in cell phones and shelter, you don't think they're calling up their friends saying this is uh, get your butt here before before Trump wins. They're, they're going to close this border. Get up here. So it's only going to bring more and more people in here. Uh, which is which is pretty funny, you know. You have you have uh, you have the power of Biden and Kamala Harris. Do you remember these two lines? First line was when they want to stop illegal immigrants from coming into California. Do you remember Kamala Harris saying, 
don't come. Don't come. She's but, from California. Know, but she said, don't come. And they said, is she joking? Like, that's going to stop me. You're giving out free insurance, money, jobs. I can vote. I can, by the way, I can carry a gun and be a police officer. Being illegal, you could hire me. And you're telling me don't come. That's almost as funny as when Israel's in this battle and Kamala Harris says, don't. Telling the rest of the world, if you think you're going to attack Israel, don't. So let's see. What are we up to? 74 attacks on our thing? No, over 100. <laughs> over 100. Like 104. At what point do you think that word don't, that she has to say means shit? Seriously. Yeah. I mean, don't. Don't come. Don't do this. I mean, it's, she's a joke. Trump comes in day one. He bombs the shit out of a refinery in Iran or something like that. And, you know, it ends real fast. You know, I, thought I watched I watched the other day. It was crazy. When he met Kim Jong-un, I watched a reel where he actually walked across the demilitarized right. zone into North to Korea. To show the point that he was willing Shook to his hand and walked. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching that and I'm saying his Secret Service must have been going ballistic. They must have been going insane. But, but you know what? He wants to show you that the rest of the people are saying, oh, look what he did for democracy and this and that. And it's like funny. If you look at Biden today, they need a campaign thing, a slogan on how to beat Trump. And their new thing, I'm letting you know right now, is democracy. The big word is going to be democracy is at stake. You know, it's always at stake when it's against them. It's at stake here. And you're sitting there, you got to say to yourself, democracy, you guys are doing things that are like, you're trying to keep a guy off of a ballot. He didn't even, he's not even convicted yet. Stuff is being thrown out. You got the world is at war all over the place. She's going to take over that Taiwan. That is crazy. The world we got a, is on we got fire. Our border, we got our border is coming across like crazy, and we're worried about this the democracy. How about the economy? The economy. Let's democracy. See, you can't afford to buy a car right now. We're not going to have a country. Like car loans. Um, who was I talking to this week? Somebody was going to buy a car and get a car loan. It was 11%. 11%. Right. For a car loan, it's between 8 and 11% for a car loan. Mortgages are now starting to come down. They're at 6.5%. You know, they were up around 7.5%, so right. they are coming down a full point. But who knows what's but, going yeah, I'm just saying the democracy is you just got to look at this world right now, and you look at, you look at Biden, and the issue is if he wins— it's Kamala Harris is the president of the United States for at least two years. Or of Joe that. Biden. Or Joe Biden. But this guy's talking about democracy. This guy's doing everything he can to to stop Trump right now. Did you see that they just threw out a bunch of cases from the January 6th thing? I mean, yeah, he's he's being endorsed. It's going to be Trump versus Biden. And it should be it should be a landslide. So I'm going to make a prediction here. I don't think Biden makes it. He doesn't. I don't think. I, I don't think physically uh, he can make it. I mean, we're talking about when's the election? November. Is it next November? Should be the governor of Kentucky. Democratic governor of Kentucky would be great. He's he would be great. What, when's no it, is it him. next November or the November? This after November coming up is the election. Is the election? So he literally has you know ten months. Ten months. Well, he could he could get it. He could get he's it. He's stubborn. They say he's coming across. He may get it. But another interesting a winner this week that we met. Um, Galvi and I went to a book signing. We met Judge Janine. Yeah. She's beautiful. Right. She's smart. She's intelligent. Travels with a lot of security. A lot of she had the Israeli Mossad uh, security force out guarding her that because day. it was for a charity for a Jewish hospital. Yeah, it was a Jewish hospital, but she did have the Mossad out there, and um, she looked terrific. She looked great. She's... I don't know how old she is, but she looked amazing. Well, you know... Gavi got a book. I didn't. Yeah, you know. She you signed it for Gavi. Uh, luckily, you didn't say, you didn't check your phone and ask Siri, how old is Judge Janine? Because... Uh, Why, well, so she was, yeah, well, I'm not that close up, but... Because my brother was in a special, uh, was in a, uh, uh, was with a watch company, uh, and they had, Brookshield was an ambassador of, 
of this watch company. And my brother looked at her and thought, you know, she looks good. Pretty good. And he talked in, he whispered into Siri on his phone and said, how old is Brooke Shield? And he didn't know his volume was up. And, said, <laughs> and it said, Brooke Shield is 59 years old. And the it's whole place, like, and she turned around to know that my brother uh, asked that question, which is like, if you know I would say Judge Janine's in her seven, early 70s. We want her to come on the podcast. Maybe she needs a watch or something, Gavi, a tough-to-get watch, mm -hmm. and maybe we can work now, that out that way, get, uh, and come out of well, that Well, we have no shot of her coming on if she's younger than 70 right now after... <laughs> <laughs> we have no shot of that. So uh, she better I'm be, sorry, she, Judge she Janine. You looked be, about she 62. Better be, she better be in her mid-70s at that point, because I think she looks like mid-60s. Yeah, yeah. Um, she looked great. Uh, yeah, she... Uh, and she had a big crowd for her book signing. Drew a, a really big crowd. It was... Uh, it's nice to see. She's a breath of fresh air, you know, to, to yeah. come down here. Yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of uh, the whole five, everything that the... Uh, That's a great show. Yeah. Number one show on TV, cable, I think. It is. So, you know, then you got, did you see, like, some of the other people that go up against them, some of these other cable shows, when they try to, like, s sway you a little bit? Like, even, like, when they uh, talked about the plagiarism. Did you hear CNN give the spin on, by the way? I've been, I've been watching a lot of CNN. I don't have they a problem. They made, like, all she did was put quotes around what someone else said. I know, I know. <laughs> but they're Come just on. trying to... Uh, appeal to their audience let's say I, I mean cnn i think their coverage of the israeli war has been very very good right um but yeah they are slanted left fox is slanted right that's the way it is so, so gabby we have last thing on my list you know we're both from philadelphia originally we have those philadelphia eagles the football team you know they're not doing so great you know, the last last four games, they won one, lost three. One they should the, against the Giants, which we have a huge New York audience here. You know, we hate the Giants, but, you know, we love you well, guys. Well, the nice thing about Philadelphia sports fans, we are highly intelligent sports fans. And when they lost to Dallas we thought okay it happens it was in Dallas and that you know you can't you can't win every game then when we lost to San Francisco and got white pretty good we were thinking all right we got to improve you know we'll put some make some changes and we can improve then when we lost to Seattle on a 92 play drive to end the game with a backup quarterback for Seattle we were like uh uh we got some real problems here and then when the Arizona Cardinals just beat us we now think, okay, pitchers and catchers report February 15th, <laughs> That's funny. then the season is over. So well, we I, need, I need a prediction. If they lose the wild card game, Philadelphia loses. Or We're going to win the wild card game. But We're if they lose, lose, is Nick Serrano the coach done? Yes. He's a, the coach. He's the coach. He gets a bye. He, he gets get, a bye. He gets another year. And we have we got a brand new offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. They're both gone. But I don't buy. Everybody's saying, well, the whole defensive line and all the defensive players are hurt. If you're a great coach, you know how to substitute, and you can win games, even if you have hurt players. Everybody in the NFL. It's week 17. Everybody's hurt. We have five. Players. Everybody's hurt. We have five players on our defense. We replace six, six starters on on, the t on our defensive side of the ball from last year. Five players went to University of Georgia that are either rookies, four rookies, and two. Uh, and I don't two, think it matters. And two now let me tell you something. University of Georgia. Taking the other side of this. University Gabby. of Georgia is a great football team. But you're asking college players to come in the next year and go up against the they're San fresh. Francisco. They're, they're they, college. They don't have film on Clemson. them. There's a lot of advantages. They're not playing Clemson. They're playing San Francisco. Give them time and they'll be good. But in one year, you can't go from playing Clemson and Florida State to playing the San Francisco 49ers I'm Dallas. saying everybody, week 17's banged up. That's not a good excuse. You I'm know not what we had him. to look forward to? You know Philadelphia has that the rest of the country has to get involved in? You know Soccer. How, <laughs> no, you know how, you know how cheesesteaks have taken over, like Philly cheese. Everybody yeah. says Philly cheesesteaks, yeah. except it's pretty funny when someone came from uh, came from Michigan. And they got to like one of the cheesesteak places and they ordered a Philly cheesesteak. And the guy behind Pat's says, "You don't have to use the word Philly here, you know." Cause, yeah. <laughs> you know, but we are going to turn people onto the mummers. 
It's over a hundred years. Crazy. No one even knows what the Mummers is. I bet you, Ben. I bet you don't even know what the Mummers is. But I think watch the Skinny podcast. The last week was all in Philly Mummers. It was did, great. Okay, well that's great. Yeah, that's the good. Skinny. Okay, yeah, because I think that's great that he uh, that he did that. He because, did a great show on the Mummers. Yeah, because I got to tell you something. The Mummers is uh, is something special. Makes Philadelphia unique. Uh, and by the way, everybody can dance. Every even if you don't have any rhythm. Competition. But even if you don't have any rhythm, if someone said to you, "What is the Mummers strut?" You know it. Right. Every and Philadelphia the, knows it. And these outfits are heavy. I mean, you know, they're wearing crazy outfits, big outfits. So everybody out there, look at the mummers. Go to 2024 mummers. Yeah, look at what a mummer is. and It'll be like every city should have a little mummers parade. Anyway, Gavi, we're running out of time. And you want to say something, Ben? I was just saying, I, I pulled it up. It looks pretty cool. Well, the we'll mummer put it parade. on. Yeah, Let's put it on. let everybody it see it. I'll yeah, it I, mean, I have to run. A, I'm lucky. I'm getting a root canal in a half hour. So <laughs> we see that you're in a good mood for no, that. No, <laughs> I am. I took some medicine before the root canal. All right. So it's this, right? This is the mummer parade. Like, put it up. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. It's unbelievable. Wow. Nowhere in the country do they do anything. That's like where these. Jason Kelsey. Look at these wore outfits. Can you imagine what one of them must weigh? Yeah. They practice all year. They get ripped for this event. So everybody's drinking. And there's different brigades, and there's competition amongst yeah, the all clown these. brigade, the string yeah. thing. Wow, look at that. They got Batman Jokers it's around. It's crazy. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. I've never heard of that Look before. at Jason Kelsey. If you get a chance, when the Eagles won the Super Bowl, Jason Kelsey gave a speech, and he wore a mummer's outfit. It's the greatest speech for I, a Super I Bowl saw that. champion, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. watch Jason Kelsey. Ben, Google Jason Kelsey's speech. It was unbelievable. <laughs> and that's before his brother was dating Taylor Swift. Wow. And, look at this. you know, I did get a, um, a text from somebody from Philadelphia that said, you know, you can break balls about Philadelphia, but the next day after that Mummers parade, the city was immaculate. Right. They cleaned it up. Right. Wow, so there you go for Philadelphia. Great tradition. Look at that. That was his mummer's outfit, right? Yeah. yeah. But Look you got to see a speech. Yeah. When you get a when All right, you, I'll check out his speech. Check definitely. out his speech. It's the will. great. And well, get the uncut version so you get to hear exactly what okay. he said. He's okay. loved in Philadelphia. He's a, yeah, he's that's it. So they love him. Philadelphia. He is Mr. Philadelphia. It's Toto. a cool, I mean, that's, yeah, that's that's definitely a It's kind of amazing yeah. he embraced Philadelphia like that. Yeah. I mean, and Philly embraced him. And, tr and uh, Taylor Swift's from right outside Philly. Yeah, Allentown or Reading or something. Yeah. Anyway, folks, thank you so much. It feels good to be back in this chair, And I Gaudi. might have a special guest for next week. Oh, uh, who are we going to have? Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to see if I can get Andy Green to come on our show. Andy Green so I runs the largest sex toy manufacturing company in the world. Well, no, he distributes. Distributes, just, distributes. Distributes. Okay. I'm putting pressure on you, Andy. Andy, come on the show. We have a lot of questions for you. What is your most popular <laughs> item in 2023? Yeah, yeah, you're right. There's a lot of women out there. And that's there that one wanna... question right off right, the that's cuff. One question that's one... And there's a lot of women. I, women yeah, know. I have a whole list here. Right. All right, folks, you can get us on Spotify, Facebook, Instagram, Apple, YouTube. Watch our TikTok reels, and we'll see you next week. It's been a great show, Gavi. It's been a lot of fun, and we'll see who's in trouble next week, I guess, right? Well, sounds good. Take care. See ya. Cause I'm only